Hello, I wonder if you can remember the very first time that you did something that was a really big deal, something very special. Maybe when you first learnt to ride a bike. And uh, maybe if you'd been riding your bike and you were learning, you'd, you'd had somebody that was coming alongside you, holding your saddle and running alongside maybe your dad or your older brother. And then eventually came that, that moment where they let go and you went off riding all by yourself. Or maybe when you learnt to swim, and you know, you'd been in the pool, you'd had armbands or a, one of those toggly things, and there came that day when you, you took it all off and you decided that you were going to swim all by yourself. I wonder if you can remember how you felt. You probably felt kind of nervous and excited, all together, all mixed up inside, going round and round. Well, I'm going to tell you the story this morning about somebody who, the very t first thing that, time that they did something, and that person was Jesus. You see, for the first 30 years, Jesus worked at home with his father as a carpenter. And then one day he decided that he was going to become a miracle worker. And he was the very first person to do that, the very first miracle worker the world had ever seen. And I'm going to tell you the story about the very first miracle that Jesus ever did. And that miracle happened at a wedding. Now, at this wedding there were four special people. There was the bride and the groom, obviously, because you can't really have a wedding without the bride and the groom, and they are the most special of them all. And there was Jesus and his mum. Now, I don't know whether Jesus would have taken his mum or gone with his mum to the wedding if he realised it was going to turn into being an, an all-night party. But you see, the miracle, sorry, the wedding went on for one day and one night, and then it went into the next day and the next night, and then onto the third day. And it was on the third day when it happened. Now, maybe you've seen the television programme You've Been Framed, and uh, my favourite clips on that programme are, are the things where it goes wrong at a wedding. And it does seem if things can go wrong with a wedding, they will. Well, maybe the thing that you least expect to go wrong at a wedding is to run out of food. And guess what? No, they didn't run out of food. They ran out of wine, which was in some ways even worse. It was a massive insult to run out of wine. It meant that you hadn't planned that you were a rubbish host and all your guests would be, would be sort of without anything to drink. And it was a terrible thing. And the, the, the people that organised it and the bride and groom's f uh, families must have been worried and just trying to work out what they were going to do. Because it wasn't like in those days you could pop down to the supermarket and buy some more. And it was at that moment that Jesus, his mum, turned to Jesus and said, Jesus, do something. And Jesus said, no, no way, not on your, not on your life. It's not my time. It's not the right time. And Jesus' mum, being a really sympathetic Jewish mum, said to the waiter next to them and said, look, whatever Jesus tells you, just do it. Now, I don't know the look that Jesus gave to his mum, but I think it was probably one of those looks that maybe you've given to your mum sometimes when she's asked you to do something and you go, oh, I don't... Oh, all right, Mum. And so Jesus turned to the waiter and he pointed over there to six stone water jars. And these water jars, they were massive. They would contain about 100 to 150 gallons of water. And they were there for, for using, for, for washing and washing people's feet and stuff like that. And Jesus said to the waiter, he said, take a jug and go and, and fill it up with the water from the water jar. Now, I don't know what the waiter must have thought. He probably thought that Jesus had gone a bit bonkers, but he's, he looked at Jesus and his mum, I'm guessing, and his mum said, go on, just do it, do it. And so we know that the waiter took a jar and he, he went over to the water jar and he, he dipped it into the water. And when he took it out, he couldn't believe his eyes. The, the water had turned into wine. Well, it looked like wine and it, it smelt like wine. And I reckon as he was walking up to the top table to go to where the... The master of ceremonies was there hosting the wedding. He was probably feeling really nervous and a bit scared and thinking, oh my goodness, it, it, it does look like wine, it smells like wine, I just hope it is wine, otherwise I'm going to get into so much trouble. I bet his hand was shaking just a little bit as he poured out a glass of wine for the master of ceremonies. The master of ceremonies picked up the wine and he gave it a little swirl in the glass like they do, and then he gave it a sniff like they do. And then he took a taste and, oh, oh my goodness, this is the best wine I've ever tasted. He said, oh, what an honour you do us. Most people, they bring out the best wine on the first day of the wedding. And then they, they serve the old rubbish after that, thinking that no one's going to notice. But you, 
have kept the best wine until last. Now, we don't know what happened after that because that's where the Bible story stops. But I'm guessing that with 100, 150 gallons of the, the very best wine, they must have had a great ending to the wedding. But I need to sort of stop as well at this point to explain the difference between what Jesus did when he turned the water into wine and what I've been doing here, which is just a trick. You see, when Jesus turned the water into wine, it was a miracle. And of course, only God can do miracles. But Jesus is God. He is God the Son. Whereas I say, what I've been doing here is just a trick and anybody can do tricks. You see, if you remember, and you need to watch carefully now, watch, watch the spots on the card. Watch my fingers, because I can assure you that at no point will my fingers ever leave my hands. We talked about the very first day of the, uh, the very first miracle that Jesus did. We talked about the four special people there at the wedding. We talked about the third day at the wedding. And then we talked about the six stone water jars. Well, when we did that, you said, when I, when I talked about the very first miracle that Jesus did, and being the very first miracle worker, I'm holding my card like this, and then a bit later on, I'm... I was talking about the, the third day of the wedding and I was holding my card like this. And you see, it depends how I hold my card as to what you actually see and then what you think is actually on there. So if I'm talking about number one, the first miracle, the first miracle uh, worker, then you just kind of assume there is one. And then when, later on when I was talking about the four special people, you just, uh, sorry, the third day of the wedding, you assume that there are three dots there, but there actually there's just two. And remember, we talked a little bit later, we talked about the four special people. And then a bit later on, I talked about the, the six stone water jars. And again, depending how I'm holding my card and what I've said, I've kind of whether I've led you into thinking there are six or there's four, when actually there are just five. And so it is just a trick. And uh, I actually said about it was the very first miracle that Jesus ever did. And well, that's kind of only half true because it was the very first miracle that Jesus did here on earth. But of course, before that, Jesus had been in heaven before he came back down to earth. And in heaven, there are three people, aren't there? The Bible says that there is, there is just one God, but it's made up of three different people. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now that's a really, really hard concept to understand. Even really sort of clever people that have studied the Bible for many years can't really understand how that can be, how you can have one God made up of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We just have to accept that that is true. And I said it was the first miracle that he did on earth, which it was, but the very first miracle he did was when he was in heaven with his Father and with the Holy Spirit. And the very first miracle that he actually did was when he created the world. And I wonder if you can remember how many days the Bible tells us that he created the world in. It was six. Six days or six periods of time. Some people think it's a, a period of time. It doesn't, doesn't really matter, but actually I find it just as easy to, to believe that it really was just six days that God took to create the whole of the world. And uh, I think about one of the things in the Bible is, is that it says that God is the same yesterday and today and forever. Now, if God really is the same yesterday, today and forever, does that mean that God still does miracles today in the same way that he did all those years ago? Well, that, that is what Christians believe. We don't know why we don't see more miracles, but we do occasionally see miracles and we hear miracles, especially in other parts of the world. Now, I don't know which or what miracles Jesus might uh, do in any given situation, but I do know the greatest miracle that he does is in the lives of people who choose to follow him, to become his friend, and to kind of give their lives to him. And again, I can't tell you exactly what will happen to people that do that, but I can tell you this, it'll be something amazing, something beyond what you could ever imagine or expect. It's a truly wonderful thing. And you know what? I recommend that you try it. You tell God that you, that you do believe him, that you want to follow him, you want him to be your friend. Thank you.